Um, so, since we, uh, we shut that, but, oops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, since we did that, why don't we uh, practice that, uh, just so we had it, uh, practice this. Again, this is, uh, uh, you know, to give you some of the DT stuff, 90% of people are right-handed. So 9% of the attacks or the grab or punch will be coming from your left side, right? So if you try it, <clears throat> like a I-Hami, you know, and the attack's coming in, you'll do a punch. Yeah. Let's just uh, take it back, one step back, because it's easy to teach someone one step grab and two, and just to keep it here. So if we were to change anything, I'd almost eliminate bringing the arm down for a pin. Because why give up a perfectly good control and compliance position to bring it down and allow them to, to get up. Right? And from here, if it's going to be uh, cupping or control and compliance, then you have the sound or you have a knee kill, you can raise them up from there and still move them out of the scene. Right? If it's cupping and still down, you'll be able to do a thumb cup, put it behind the back, which uh, you can do more. Okay, grab that one, cup them. First cup is thumb cup, second cup. Okay. So we can try this side, but in a sense, um, if you're teaching, like say it's you know, diplomatic security, you know, it's in the protecting the president stuff, right? Nine percent of shooters are gonna be right handed. So if he's shooting at the president that way, then he's right there. I should train that. Okay? Less likely it's gonna be so if you want, you know, we could just do the right hand and just for a few minutes. And just for a few minutes. Sensory, you know, that you're just grabbing. So uh, there's something to be said for grabbing. There's something to be said for not. Okay? But um, if uh, you're going to pump, okay, make use of the grab in this case. Okay? And keep it. Okay? It's the other side. Okay? I'm sorry. Don't switch your hands off. Keep the grab. And make use of it. Yeah. Once you have it. You can start falling into your uh, regular training, right? Regular training, step out, step out, right? This side, you know, uh, we'll keep it. Step out, step out. Doing all this training to do that, right? Just step off the line. Again, if you had to break it down to teach someone, just came to you suddenly, and you know, I need to know how to protect myself before I go out tonight. <laughs> it's going to be easier to teach them one step, okay? and you're actually teaching them how to attack somebody past. You know? okay. So, one step. Okay. Essentially, we still own the line, and you get to learn how to 
drop the line. So catch yourself. Right? Catch yourself that you don't do one, two. Okay? That's your training coming in. But see if you can do it one. I think that was way too many. Yeah. If I only want to set, right? So you go to the front that way. If I take one punch with one step here, he's got another hand going right on this side. Hey, same sort of thing. I start to go, I go like this. So one step. We're doing our basic pins, right? In fact, uh, you all know this, right? He has a knife, you know. same methodology going towards the center of the head, enough stretch, then you won't have to struggle with getting the fingers. The hand will open up and then you'll be able to get the finger to come down to the side. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's do some showing that uh, you know he doesn't adjust, you know. He's just going to slam right down, right? And no elbow off to the side, essentially the elbow comes in just like it was a hammer, right? Just to have that kind of center. Okay? And even on this side. Just to have that sense. Okay. So it's going to be uh, new in one sense. So don't think, oh, I have to do this. You know, just let it happen. So as it's just like, uh, boom, as this is coming in, just see what one step would do and how it would bring, bring him down, right? And what you would have to do from here you know, to control the body. Okay. Let's play with it. And same thing applies it. Turn them over and let it roll. Let's try to partners One step. Hope you will. One step. It's a false sense of stuff. I don't know. Oh, baby. We can go over the board. After a few seconds after he's finished, we'll just go ahead and press that. So it's, uh, it's tough, right? We do all this training to turn over for each other. You know, it's a like, condition response now. So it's different if you're thinking in terms of what actually happens. If the hammer's coming in, you're not going to do that. Okay? The hammer's coming in, boom. Okay? So the hammer comes in, okay? it goes right down. So now you know, recognize that you have to control you know, to use your elbow. Okay? If it's coming back this way, if they choose to do this, then they do that. But uh, yeah, it's not, it's not the normal reaction. They wouldn't turn it on. Through the fingertips, and it's always a case where 
Um, if I allow their very fingertips to go, somebody's going to be able to help. So to get the fingertips, you know, and move that towards their back, it will depend on their range of motion and all, but you get the fingertips, doobie doody, doobie doody, you can move that, and uh, that'll give you the confidence. Yeah. Okay. I feel it's really worthwhile, uh, you know, all these years, look at us, you know, you do an Aikido pin, they tap, you let go. Maybe we put it on their back, you know, but you let go. Well, you know, holy smokes, you know, if you need to keep control and compliance, move them out of the scene, um, get them out of harm's way, maybe the building's collapsing or something like that. But, uh, you know, it's worthwhile to have a continuity of control uh, for these. You know, it builds your confidence, opens up joints for them, and you can have your done. Okay. That's my thing. <laughs> said that, this is one of those cases where when you do grab, uh, it might be hard for somebody to let go, because once they have it, they don't want to let go. So having said that, and so they did that, right? Cutting. Keep the hands open, fast and free. Okay? But maybe if I miss or I have to do something else, I'm not caught, caught up in the world. So let's, let's play with both of those, see if you can do it again, like one step back and then some move on. As opposed to... One, two. Okay. 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 One, two, one. Just get, get where you can see. Okay. Hands natural with the feet. Second out of the way. Hands natural with the feet. Okay. And then in this case, since I'm going to move my right foot, my right hand will go in there. So it's not that you have to move the hand, you move your body and you move the hand. And then body hand. But just to get the, the confidence of it, just to be able to have that. And then. <laughs> By the way, with all the other ones too, if we go back to this one, uh, you know, that's the next thing. Yeah, and then from the other side, okay, one step, secondary. Uh, too bad we didn't do that a couple minutes ago. But anyway, <laughs> let's try that. See if you can one step back and have that kind of relationship. And then not to move the hand, you move the body and the hand and go along. Yeah. You know, just some thoughts on uh, 
practicality without losing uh, the IQ principles. Um, and you know, when you're doing this, like um, a when you're doing this kind of uh, adjustment, that could be a quick break so you're empowered, right? Uh, so I'm usually pointing out in classes that what you could do and then you're empowered so you can uh, choose to do a, uh, another response, right? A more ethical option. Right? So you have that kind of option to come along. Right? Um, but let's see, for a few minutes, we'll go back to like a simple way of teaching people uh, EQ, right? And uh, you can make good before, but cross hand, okay, fix the E. And just walk. So you go back to beginner's mind, you know, if you're brand new, you know, okay, rather than try and do anything like that, just fix your feet, fix your hair, and just walk. No fancy stuff in there like that. And so then that's a way of getting them out of the idea of going in. You're subtly teaching them how to draw it out, okay? And then to go around, okay? Let's do that one first. It doesn't need to go all the way down. Just to touch base. You're with a like, uh, say he clamps down on me and I'm a beginner. Well, you know, I might still have tension in here. He's got me, you know. Uh, we have to keep in mind that, you know, you're all open, you know. So just, it's just a learning experience. So you don't clamp down on a beginner. Certainly, there's some schools that will do that. It's one way for them to learn. But uh, to let it be easy so they can have some success. And then slowly, yes. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, you find out. Oh. You find out what's practical and what's impractical. Thank you. Thank you. Throwing this sort of thing. It's only actually like one of the nice methods of teaching someone where the flow goes. Because you know, and here's a. Here's one flow, here's another flow. So how to get the confluence in some manner, right? So with this one, you're doing this, okay? and then you want an outlet for his and mine, so it's very often this sort of thing, right? But it can be um, a point where you start to do something, right? So say I got up to this point and I start to do something, it's easy for them to stop. So there's something to be said for that, but there's something to be said not for them. So you come up here, and then you move the body, and let the, there's all one singular line there. I'm about to have a separate line. Okay? So I fix my knee, fix my grab the middle like that, and move the, move the body, and there you go. Okay? Uh, and one more to the side. Grab the mat, and It's uh, the ability to keep the hand soft, because you can stop that by put tension in it. Okay? How do you keep the hand soft and move the whole body? Okay, we we'll can do, do that for a few. Thank you, Sensei. I think this is even worthwhile for beginners, you know, rather than that method that you choose to do. You can probably turn your hips outside. So then watch out for watch out for. It's a it's a natural thing, but just to make it aware in case you want to take a beginner. That means a big help. So I think uh, hips are turning. So my usual thing is if you don't punch it, my usual thing is just turn and go and go. Yeah. yeah, but not. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, established ikyo, you know, how to get their arm up and all that sort of thing. Is it necessary? No. One step back. One step back, not trying to do anything. Essentially, you hold strong, nice and steady. I might have to switch my base, maybe, but I can practice leaning back. Continue to go, turn my hips, turn my arm, okay. and everything goes along, right? Not trying to pull them off, but just drawing them, okay? So this might be worthwhile to the finish what we're doing. So don't buy into that. I admire his grip. Fantastic.
Try that. No looking. Yeah. 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 How many steps? What? Okay. If it's dropping, arm goes along with that. If uh, so, rocking back. One's control step back. Hip is turning. Body goes along with that, and the hand line is going. But as soon as I start to think too soon about bringing this up at any point, okay, yep. even at this point, right? I'm not thinking about bringing the hand up, you move everything else. Thank you, Sensei. Swap to the next. Okay, so another way, again, uh, maybe had trouble with that, you know, maybe had trouble with the other one before, okay? The other one is always just a turn, okay, make it a big movement, and then walk in. Okay? Let go of some of the you know, obvious martial uh, concerns. Okay? Okay? But you just give them a big feeling that it's easier to go over the wall than through it. Okay? They open up their mind. You know? Just a big circle. Then that sort of concept you know, can start to go smaller and smaller. Just big boom, get them to turn their body, okay? big feeling. They say, well, they can punch me there. Tell them, you're doing this slow, okay? and you have all this to distract them, and it's going to come down pretty quick. So, big movement, and then we'll call it big. Right, now we'll do the static practice to uh, learn specific uh, elements of movement, right? Where to move, and how to move, and especially dealing with fight, flight, freeze. So if somebody's got hands on, you know, you don't freeze up, lose everything else. But really, uh, what's happening is you offer, you know, the whole body's moving, so it becomes more practical. You're already moving, you're moving with it, big, big feeling. And it's the idea that uh, you can always close it up. So it's always worthwhile. It's why it's not just to have one cookie cutter way of doing it. And it's going to be different applications. You're either more than, you know, somebody won't be able to describe you to the team because we're all multiple, you know, uh, aspects of uh, character and all that. So it just explores different parts of you. Uh, one more minute. Two more minutes. So a little bit of movement.